you know, the best titles uh, spark three emotions, curiosity, fear, and or desire. So Jake Thomas is a self-proclaimed YouTube title nerd. He writes a newsletter called Creator Hooks, where he helps you to write better YouTube titles. In today's episode of Creators on Air, Jake shares everything he knows about writing YouTube titles. From writing titles for search or discovery to common mistakes that YouTubers make, there's a lot more to it than you think. I was a, a channel manager at my last job. And I, at first I was like really bad at writing YouTube titles and I almost got fired <laughs> because oh, I was gosh. so bad. Um, <laughs> and uh, I actually, I talked to my boss like two years later and he's like, yeah, like we weren't sure if you were going to make it, but you did. Um, oh, wow. yeah, but, but, and he was really good. He was really good at writing YouTube titles. So, um, but he, he wasn't like, he was, he was just like kind of naturally good. He couldn't really like tell me why, you know, what makes a good, good title. Um, so kind of the pressure was on just working under him. Um, but I finally figured out and what I kind of figured out was you don't have to like, uh, just be totally original. You can just model what works. Um, so an example of this was, um, uh, he was on a, a hunting podcast and so we're a fishing channel. He, uh, he was on a hunting podcast and he said, Hey, uh, they did a podcast about uh, newbie hunting gear. So he's like, let's do a podcast about newbie fishing gear. And that worked really well for us. Um, that was like our best podcast of the last like two months. Uh, we had a ton of downloads, a ton of people like opened the email and clicked the email. And we also made a bunch of money from it. So that was kind of the light bulb moment where it's like, okay, you don't need to be totally original. You can just model what works in another industry. Uh, and then like, finally, like things started clicking. I started becoming much better at writing YouTube titles. Um, and what I was doing kind of internally was every Monday morning, we had our content meeting and I would send our, so we had fishing coaches. So they were doing the, the fun stuff. They were out on the water fishing and like do, uh, filming tutorials. And I was, I was at home uh, turning all their cool videos and putting those online. Um, but I would send them uh, different ideas from other industries. It's like, hey, um, you know, five mistakes, uh, you know, for, um, you know, like for saving money did well in this finance channel. Let's do five mistakes for catching trout. Um, something like that. And so that worked really well for us. And then I was wondering, well, this is working well for us. I, I bet this would work well for other industries too, or other, other channels. So I started a newsletter. Um, I sent it out to like 50 people, like just kind of like cold emails. Um, I had a couple of people say they really liked it. Um, so that started the newsletter and that was about a year and a half ago. And uh, it's been going very well since then. I love that you were looking at different niches to apply to your own. I think that's a really clever strategy. Were there any kind of patterns that you were seeing across the board in terms of what titles performed well? Yes, lots of, there's lots of patterns. Um, so like my whole, like all I do uh, is look for patterns across different industries. Um, a couple patterns right now, I'm seeing uh, habits work really well. So um, there was a, a channel, so in this morning's newsletter, a channel, she had, she was averaging like, one or 2000 views a video. And then she made a video about like four one minute habits to save 20 hours a week. Um, and that got like one or two or like 300,000 views. Wow. Um, so like, it, I think it ended up getting like 140 times her like normal, uh, her normal, um, normal view count. So I've seen that a lot. I've seen habits work really well. That's one of the patterns. Um, and then, you know, uh, Negativity works well often too. A lot of people don't want to be like fear mongers or just talk about uh, about negativity, but it does uh, it does work very well on YouTube. Yeah, I feel like I've noticed that on my channel because I feel like my two most popular videos, their titles are like I don't want to say negative, but like have more negativity in them versus other titles. Um, mm -hmm. But do you ever find like what do you ever find there's a pattern in terms of like what makes a viewer want to click? though like so not necessarily the like model of the title but just what that title creates for that viewer do you know what I mean yeah so I mean as, so as far as like I, in my uh my opinion is that you know the best titles uh spark three emotions curiosity fear and or desire so usually it's like curiosity 
plus fear or curiosity plus desire. Um, and that's just like general terms. That is what often gets people click is those three emotions. That's really interesting. And how would you, is there like a difference between titles that are performing well in search and titles that are more for going viral? Because I feel like there is a difference on YouTube and y yes. how should creators take that difference into account? Should they be trying to create titles more for one versus the other or mixing them up? Uh, that is a that is a great question. So I am a title nerd, not a YouTube strategist. <laughs> so okay. So like Ed Ed uh, Ed from Film Booth, he I think he's a big a big fan of just making videos for um, making videos for kind of discovery. You know, like browse and suggested, um, and that's where most of the views on YouTube are. It's like seventy percent of the views are from browse and suggested on YouTube. That being said, if you rank for like, you know, if you're like an accountant and you rank for like, uh, you know, accountant in New York City, then you could make a ton of money from that. So it definitely depends on your strategy. So I have like a dog channel and um, there's actually it's specifically about golden retrievers. There's actually another golden retriever channel and they focus just on search. And <clears throat> my channel gets between like, I don't know, like 150 to 350 views, uh, 350,000 views a month. And there's a dog channel that only focuses on search and they get like 30,000 views a month. Um, like all of their views are like, all of their videos get like 500 views or like 1,000 views. Um, so it's kind of like a lot of, and at least in my, my opinion, it's a lot of work for like not that much um you know, not that many views. So, so it definitely depends on your strategy. If you're, if you have a, a channel and you're monetizing through, um, through like <clears throat> AdSense and like sponsorships, then I probably wouldn't do search, um, you know, because, uh, you know, you're going to want to see a ton of views. So I probably wouldn't do search there, but, um, but if you have a service, then yes, you would definitely want to at least make some videos for search. But then as far as like what, um, uh, you know, what titles do do better and, and which one. So for search, it's pretty, <clears throat> it's pretty basic. Like it just kind of comes to knowing what the audience wants, right? So what are they searching for? Mm -hmm. If, <clears throat> excuse me, what are they searching for and who they are and like, why are they really searching? So for instance, if you're trying to, <clears throat> to, uh, to rank for how to start a YouTube channel, if you if you search that up right now, a lot of them say how to start a YouTube channel for beginners. And that's because if you're looking for how to start a YouTube channel, you're probably a beginner. So it's like calling that specific person out um, because, you know, I'm, you're not going to look up how to start a YouTube channel because you already have one. You don't really need to, to look that up. You've already done it. Um, but right. beginners know that. So so that in that case, it really comes down to knowing your audience and like, who are they? So in this case, you know, calling up beginners is a great strategy. Um, also, if you look up like how to get a six pack, almost all of the top results will be how to get a six pack in 10 minutes or like in 10 minutes a day or like how to get a six pack in 22 days or something. So if you want a six pack, you probably want it fast, right? Um, yeah. So, so it's, it's really knowing your audience. I've seen a couple, what I'm calling them click triggers. Uh, a couple click triggers seem to do better in search. Um, so like calling out a specific audience, usually that's for beginners. Um, time frames. So that's like uh, the six pack example, you know, how to how to get a six pack in 22 days or whatever. Um, using the current year works well. Um, and that works well, especially for um, technology. So like, you know, if you look at like best laptops, you're going to see best laptops in 2023 um, because laptops are always changing. Um, right. Like you don't want to see best laptops in 2021 because those are all old. Um, <clears throat> so those three, and then, um, there is one or two more and I'm blanking on them, but I will find them for you right now. So, um, <clears throat> um, so lists, uh, lists is like, you know, especially if you're looking up like best laptops, you're going to see a lot of lists, um, like the current year calling up beginner tips or calling up beginners. And then time frame. So lists was the one that I was uh, the the one that I was forgetting. Um, so that's ranking in search. And then as far as um, oh, and then sorry. Also, you don't want to like exactly match, or you can you can exactly match what the user is searching for. Um, 
but it needs to be close, right? So you can like, if you're looking up how to start a YouTube channel, you would probably want to put how to start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, you know, just because, uh, because the audience is going to be like, oh, this is exactly what I'm searching for. This is answering my question. I'm going to watch this video. You probably would not rank for like, you know, don't do this if you want to start a YouTube channel. That's not going to rank well in search. Um, but it would do really, it would probably do well. Um, you know, it would, YouTube would probably show that person who watched how to start a YouTube channel. Uh, next time they log into YouTube on their homepage, it's probably going to be like, right. watch this video before you start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, or the one thing I regret before starting my YouTube channel. Um, so a lot of usually negativity won't work well in, um, in search, but, uh, but it will work well, um, in, uh, in like discoverability. So, um, so yeah, so it's different. Um, so in search, yes, you want to kind of give the audience what they want in, um, in browse and suggested it's like everything goes like, you know, that's when all like the, the vague, like curiosity based titles go. Uh, that's where all like the negativity goes, you know, a lot of desire works there, uh, too. Um, but it's, a it's a much broader, um, uh, you have so many more options when you're writing titles for, uh, for browse and suggested. Yeah, definitely. That makes sense. So for search, you're being a lot more specific versus browse. You're, you're kind of creating that intrigue. So people just want to click. You're just trying to yes. get that click basically. Yes, um, definitely. do you feel like it, do you feel like there's a difference between the type of channel? So if you're like an educational channel, would you lean more into one category or like if you're an entertainment channel or can any type of channel use either sort of title? Um, I think entertainment probably, there's probably not much for search there. Um, I, at least from what I've seen, I'm, I'm definitely not like the best. I, most of my experiences with like education and edutainment, um, but I would assume not many people are looking for Mr. Beast. Like I survived 50 hours buried alive. Like that's, it's not like a real like pop, <laughs> popular search term. True. Um, so I, I would assume that if you're entertainment, you're just going for like, forget search. Um, you're just going for the crazy, the crazy spectacles and challenges and all that stuff. Um, and then for, uh, for education, Many channels do a mix of like search and um, and kind of you know uh, browse based um, titles, but I mean there's so there's so much opportunity um, just kind of forgetting uh, forgetting search. Um, I think I think there's also a different type of person who is looking for a specific answer versus someone who's just like kind of in browse mode. Now, I don't have any like data to back this up. Um, and I'm sure there are people smarter than me that have a better answer. But, um, but when I, I, when I changed from, uh, from writing videos to rank on search versus writing videos to get, uh, like suggested on the homepage or recommended videos, uh, my end screen click through rate went up a lot higher. Um, it almost, it almost doubled from like about like six or 7% to like 12 to 15%. And I would, this is uh, just a, a theory, but I would assume that if someone is searching for something, they kind of want to find their answer and then they want to move on with their lives. But if someone is in like browse mode, they're like, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm watching YouTube right now. Then they, they watch a video and they're much more likely to say, okay, cool. Like this next video, I want to watch this one too. Um, and then they can kind of fall into like the rabbit hole of like binging your channel. Um, and then... And then that's how like YouTube's like, oh, cool. Like this type of person, like they watch all of their channels. Uh, let's just do a lot or they watch all their videos. Let's let's recommend them a lot more. Um, and then that's how like channels take off. That makes a lot of sense. It's a good approach. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you think there's anything that YouTubers do wrong with titles? So, like any common mistakes that you've seen happen? Yes. Yes. I've seen five, uh, five common mistakes. I think the most, the most common one is like picking the wrong topic for your channel. Um, so like if you have a channel about like how to grow on YouTube and then all of a sudden you, you know, you start talking about Instagram or something, mm -hmm. oftentimes people, uh, and this isn't like, you know, there's definitely ways to kind of grow outside of your niche or expand your niche. Um, but, uh, 
but oftentimes people know you as like the YouTube person. So like they don't want to watch your Instagram videos, right? And also maybe they're not on Instagram. Like they're definitely on YouTube if they come to you for YouTube yeah. advice, but um, but maybe they don't want to watch your Instagram stuff or um, <clears throat> or maybe they just, they're, they don't trust you for that. So one of the biggest mistakes I see is people picking the wrong topic. Um, and so it could be something as small as that or like, you know, something much bigger. Like if I'm like a fitness channel and then I start talking about how I grew on YouTube, like that's totally different. Um, <laughs> yeah. So true. people like, I don't want to, I don't want to learn about how to grow on YouTube. I just want to get a six pack or whatever. Um, so, so yeah, the, uh, picking the wrong topic is, is definitely like the biggest mistake there. And we can go into the other mistakes if you want. Yes, um, definitely. But uh, it's up to you. No, of course I cool. do. I need to know um, this stuff. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Um, speaking the wrong topic, also being too wordy is the next mistake. So there are two reasons why you don't want to be too wordy. Um, the first one is that your titles will get truncated if they're too long. Um, and that depends on where, uh, where you're, where the audience is looking. Also YouTube is changing its uh, UI right now. So uh, I don't have any like definite, um, you know, character, uh, character counts, you know, as far as like, you know, your title should be less than 56 characters. Um, but just in general, you want to have short ish titles, um, you know, because, because, you know, because your title could get truncated or also people are skimming your, uh, your, your titles, right. They're, they're, they're scrolling through YouTube really quick. And if you have a really long title, it's going to be like harder to read. People might be like, all right, I'm not reading all that nonsense. Like I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to move on. Yeah. Um, or, uh, or like they, you might have, let's, here's an example, like, uh, five mistakes that I wish I knew before I started my YouTube channel. So like the video is about started your YouTube channel. So five mistakes I wish I knew before that, that's a lot of words. Um, so if someone's just kind of like scrolling, then they might not even see that, oh, this is about starting a YouTube channel. Um, cause that's way at the back. Um, so it either will get truncated or it's just too many words to get to like the main topic. So so just like kind of keep on scrolling. Um, so that's, so you don't want to be too wordy. Um, <clears throat> so in, in this example, five mistakes that I wish I knew, um, it might be like five mistakes I made before starting my YouTube channel. I mean, that's only like two or three words shorter. Um, but when we're talking about like 56 characters or 55 characters or whatever, then two or three words makes a big difference. Um, and I don't think enough people know that. So anyway, so being too wordy, um, also being too specific, uh, is, a is another problem. And I think this goes really, you have to think about what your goals for the, uh, for the video are. Um, if you, yeah, and this really goes back to like our, our, um, our talk about like strategy, like, should you go for search or should you go for like browse and suggested? Um, so if you are trying to rank and search for a specific camera, then, you know, you would probably want to make a video about that specific camera. So that's the difference between like, um, like Nikon B 500 review versus like best camera for vlogging. Um, so if, if you, tr if you're trying to rank for like Nikon B 500 review, then yes, you'll probably want to have, you know, Nikon B 500 review in your title, but you could probably get a lot more videos if you just talk about like, if you kind of give this camera like a label, like best camera for vlogging um, and then like take it to the extreme. So like, you know, best camera um, that'll often do that'll often get you more views. So, um, and again, that goes down to your strategy, but I'm just talking, being a little bit more general talking about like pain points and benefits best camera for vlogging or like, you know, I wish I, I, I wish I never bought this camera. Um, that will often do, uh, do better than being very specific. Um, and, and it definitely, it definitely depends on how many views do you expect to get for a video? If you, um, if you expect to get a million views every video, then Nikon B 500 review is definitely not going to do it. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, true. so yeah, so it, so it all goes down to your strategy there. Um, and then uh, also at the, the other end is being too general. So you just like a title, like my favorite camera ever. Uh, it's like, okay, well that's like, doesn't really like say anything. Like it's not that cool. Um, you know, my favorite camera for vlogging or like best camera for vlogging. 
uh, it speaks to like a specific person. It's like, this is what I'm looking for, but like best camera ever is often too general. And that depends on, uh, your channel and like who you are. So like Emma Chamberlain, her titles, like nobody should ever look at her titles for, uh, <laughs> for like inspiration because so they're sure. like, they're like one or two words. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> and that's because she has like a massive audience who loves her. So she's not playing mm -hmm. by the same rules that most of us are playing by. So, uh, for most of us, <laughs> for most of us, we need to find that, um, that balance of like, all right. And like Nikon B 500 review too specific. Uh, oftentimes it depends on your strategy, but too specific best camera ever too general. You would probably want to go in the middle best camera for vlogging. Uh, something like something like that. And question, does it matter who the title applies to? So for example, yesterday I released a video about how to be more confident and I wasn't sure whether the title should be, you know, something like how I became confident versus how to be more confident. Do you know what I mean? So is yes. it best to be first person or like telling your audience that they can do it? Oh, that is a great question. And I have been thinking about that a lot. Um, so I think I have two answers for you. Um, so Alex Hermosi, uh, he's kind of like blowing up everywhere. Uh, he talks a lot about when you're making content, talk about how I, um, because if you're talking about, you should do this, you should do this. Um, that can be like a little preachy and it can turn some people off, yeah. right? Like, you know, here's how you should be more confident. And it's like, well, like, okay, like, uh, I don't know. It just, it just, it seems a little preachy sometimes and they, it doesn't always sure. come off very, uh, very well. But then at the same time, um, I did, a I did a bunch of AV tests. I did like a little project where I did 103 YouTube title AV tests. And I think with like three of the titles, I made them more about the audience. Um, so one was like a fishing example. It was like, I bought too many rods. Uh, like that was like title A and then title B um, was like, you know, why you, you know, watch this video before you buy rods online. Um, and so making it more about the audience. And I think it was three of the tests where I made it more about the audience instead of the creator. They did better. Um, so, so I don't have an, I don't have an answer for you. Okay. Um, I yeah. think it also it's depends. <laughs> it is a hard one. Um, so in my, and I did three AB tests and they, it worked better when it made it about the audience. Uh, Alex Ramosi has a fantastic point as in you don't always want to be preachy and share your story because that will give you more credibility. Um, so, but I also think it depends on, um, depends on the creator and kind of like the relationship you have with your audience. Um, a lot of entertainment channels and like, you know, Mr. Beast and like, you know, he says, I, he's like, he's like, not, he's like how I, you know, I survived 50 hours buried alive. It's not mm. you, know, you how you will survive 50 hours buried <laughs> alive or whatever. Um, and that's, it's a weird example, but, um, but with a lot of these, a lot of these channels, like the, the audience just loves the creator, right? They're here for the creator. Um, and other channels, the audience is, the audience is here to better themselves. Um, so in that case, I think it would make more sense to talk about how you can get more confident on camera. Yeah, I feel like that makes a lot of sense, actually, because you've just reminded me. I don't know if you've heard of the YouTube channel, The Wizard Liz. She's mm -hmm. been blowing up on YouTube. She's like, I think she's got almost two million followers in like the space of 10 months. Dang. And she had a video called This Video Will Make You Confident. And that's got like six million views. But it's big. It, it suits her because she's this very like motivating person and she's she's not preachy though but she's just like motivating she's telling you what you should be doing so her yeah. titles reflect that but I don't think I could get away with that because I don't talk <laughs> like that in any way so I think you've made a really good point there to think about your relationship with your own audience um, and it's interesting that you mentioned a b testing as well because it's something I wanted to ask you about do you think that's something that you should be doing for every title and how often should you change your titles for A-B testing? That's a good question. I love A-B testing, uh, but maybe not how most people think about A-B tests. So um, one, you want to A-B test your titles to kind of optimize your channel so that you have like the best titles and thumbnails, right? That makes a lot of sense. Um, but, uh, but I like A-B testing most for learning what works for your channel. Um, so I, I did an AB and like the, the project that I just mentioned, where I did 103, uh, AB tests. 
one of the guys that I did uh, a test on, he was like, Hey man, uh, I was looking at the test that you did on my channel and I use that to make a future idea, you know, based on what worked for my channel. And that is like my best video ever. So he, he used the AB testing, not to like optimize old videos, but to take those learnings and use that to create future videos. Um, so I think that's, I don't know if maybe, I don't know. I, I think that's like the most valuable thing that you can get is like just testing different theories and then using that to kind of move forward. Um, that being said, um, like in my little dog channel, I've AB tested a couple, um, a couple titles and then, you know, a couple like months later, they were doing a lot better. Um, you know, because it has like, because I increased the CTR by like 20%. Um, so, so yeah, I, I love AB testing. If a video is doing really well, I won't, I won't AB test it. Um, you know, okay. just because, you know, I don't want to mess with it. Uh, if it ain't yeah. broke, don't fix it. Yeah, um, so true. <laughs> so like, yes, just thank you, YouTube, for making this video do very well. And I'm not going to touch it. Um, and how but, do you personally, oh, sorry, how do you personally AB test them? Like, it's like, uh, like really like tactical nitty gritty stuff. Yeah. But like are you using tools or are you yeah, just. Yeah. 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 So I, two tools, um, thumbnail test.com, um, that, uh, that test, uh, titles and thumbnails, not just thumbnails, um, and, or two buddy. Uh, they're both great tools. They do the, they do pretty much the same thing. Um, <clears throat> I think like, it's, you know, you have to be on two buddies, like legendary package or something, but yeah, I use one of those two tools. Um, I've ran hundreds of AB tests with both of them. I like both of them. Um, and, uh, so I usually don't start an AB test until like five days after the video is published. Um, so how both of those tools work is they flip the video or they, they, you know, do title A and title B and they switch it every 24 hours. So if you start it on like day one, if you do an, if you start an AB test right away, uh, the first 24 hours, um, the title is like, it's way more likely to have a higher click through rate because YouTube is showing it to your own audience. Um, and then after that, so like, so you, like title a has an advantage right out of the gate. So you're not, I don't think you're really getting, um, accurate data. That's true. Um, yeah. So, so that's why I wait like five days to hopefully kind of get more accurate data, um, to kind of get like the, your like your, uh, your current audience. Most of them have hopefully already seen your video. Um, you know, by that time. So, so anyway, so, so five days after I start the, start the title or I start the, the test. And then I usually, it depends on the size of your channel. So if you have a bigger channel, you can get away with, um, running a, uh, an AB test for a shorter time frame. If you have a, uh, if you have a smaller channel, you would want to run an AB test for a very long time, not, not a very long time, but longer so that you can get more accurate data. Um, so, but I normally do like seven days per, um, per, uh, variant. So on, uh, on TubeBuddy, you can only do like an AB test. So the, t the, the norm, the total time will be like 14 days, um, of how long I run a test normally on thumbnail test. You can do like ABC, like D variant. Um, so if I'm doing three different variants, then it'll be 21 days or like four, it'll be 28 days. Um, I probably only do three. Um, I think four, like now you're waiting like a month for like test results. And yeah, I don't know. That's, that's a long time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I would, so I would use thumbnail test or uh, yeah, thumbnail test.com or two buddy wait five days, run the test for 14 days and only test one element at a time for the most part. Uh, like I wouldn't want to test a, a thumbnail and a title at the same time, because then it's like, okay, well, was it the thumbnail or was it the title? Mm, makes um, sense. I mean, you could, you could, uh, make an argument that like you're, you're totally changing, um, like, like the angle, like maybe you're talking about like, you know, five mistakes to, um, or, you know, you know, five mistakes people make when getting a six pack or like, um, you know, 10, uh, or, or like, you know, five tips to getting a six pack. So like, you know, the, you might want to have like mistakes in the thumbnail and mistakes in the title, or it'd be like kind of just a different angle. So you can make an argument with that, but uh, for the most part, I just like to do either the thumbnail or the title. And you said that you only have like two variants of the title, but beforehand, do you come up with like loads of title ideas for one idea? And 
like how long are you spending on titles as part of your ideation process? Uh, so it depends. Um, so sometimes I will come up with an idea like right away and it's like, all right, this is like, this is the title. Um, like, and usually that's when I'm modeling like pretty closely, uh, from another channel. So like with my golden retriever channel, there's a, a video that did really well. And it was like, uh, weird cat behaviors explained. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to do weird golden retriever behaviors explained. So that's like pretty, like, yeah, I don't really need to like overthink that. Like it's, it's a kind of like a, a one-to-one thing. And that's like, it was the same thing with our like newbie fishing gear, like newbie hunting gear. Like that's like, that is what it is. Um, so in that case, it took me about two seconds to come up with the title. Um, yeah. But if I'm trying to, if, if it's a little bit more complicated, um, then I'll write between like 10 to 30 titles. Um, and I'll try to, I'll try to write, write them from different angles. So I'll write, like, I'll think about like curiosity, fear, and desire. So I'll think about like all curiosity, like, you know, do this to get a six pack. Or I'll think about like negativity, like, you know, 10 mistakes that will keep you from getting a six pack. Or I'll think about like, um, you know, like desire, like, you know, I got a six pack in 10 days. Here's how. Um, So I would just kind of think all those different angles, write them all down and then think about like, all right, what, uh, you know, what's my strategy for this? Am I going for search or am I going for um, just like for browse? And also like, you know, what is my audience like? You know, I'll look at. Um, past videos that have done well like do they like it when i do negativity do they hate it when i do negativity so let me do like you know desire here um so yeah so i'll I'll just you know i'll use a bunch of different um kind of angles and then writing a bunch of different titles and then kind of narrow them down from there and when you narrow down to just the two that you a b test do you do them so they're different angles or do you not really think about that it's just two that you like the best usually uh i I think both uh both sometimes so i'm i'm a a title nerd so i will (laughs) i'll do sometimes i'll just test like little tweaks like oh does like this like one word does this make a difference or like capitalization like does capitalizing this word make a difference and that's only because like uh i'm i'm a nerd and i want to know and i'm also like writing about this stuff on twitter and in my newsletter so it's like okay i need to do more research than like the average person on titles um but uh but yeah sometimes sometimes i'll do both like if i if i like the same angle and like two titles are similarly worded um then i'll do those or other if and if like it also depends on how confident i am in like the angle that i'm going with um if uh if like weird golden retrievers beha- weird golden retriever behaviors explained i might try like 10 weird golden retriever behaviors explained um so that's pretty similar um uh, but that would be something i would want to go with um you know something i might want to test just because like do does adding a number uh does that help increase the ctr um so i don't know i, I would do both okay and how much do you think about your thumbnail as you're coming up with the title like are you thinking them about about them together or Separate. Yeah. <laughs> so I am a title nerd, not a thumbnail nerd. Um, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I've like always been like visually challenged. Uh, I'm, I'm not that good at titles. I'm or not that good at thumbnails, which is why I have a newsletter about titles. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm getting better. I'm getting better at thumbnails. Uh, but I think so it depends on uh, like what type of channel you have. But, uh, but I think it all, it, it all starts with the idea. So, um, and that's like pretty correlated, pretty close to the title, right? Like, um, so it might be, you know, how to start a YouTube channel, right? That's like the idea that people want to, um, like, that's what they want. So how to start it, how to start a YouTube channel is our idea. And then we might write a title, how to start a YouTube channel for beginners in 2023. So that's our title, but it's kind of like, it's really close to the idea. And then like the thumbnail, it's like, okay, well, you know, how do we visually represent the idea? Um, so, so I, it all, it starts with the idea and then I usually, this is just me because I'm a title nerd. So idea title, and then like thumbnail is like a visual representation of the title. Yep. That makes sense. I feel like I've learned a lot about titles in this half an hour. So thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to end with a quick fire round, which is a bit more general to creators as a whole. Um, so I'm just going to ask you a question and then just answer the first thing that comes to mind. Let's do it. 
Cool. So what's your favorite thing about being a creator? Um, I love research. I love, this is like YouTube specifically. Yeah. YouTube gives us so many numbers. I love numbers. Um, that's so why I love AB testing. Cause I love doing research and like documenting, uh, just like kind of documenting, all right, you know, this works better than this or like people love numbers more than like not numbers. Um, so like the re- the research is, is my favorite. Oh, I wish I was more like you. That's what I'm not good at. And I'm trying to be better at that, but I suck at it. Um, what gives you the most inspiration for what you create, your newsletter, what you're doing? Oh, um, that's a really good question. Um, just like, this is going to sound maybe lame, like searching for truth. Um, so oh, that's very so like, deep. that's why I love the research. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, and like, I feel like that's like not even possible. Like there probably isn't tr- truth, like, on, you know, when it comes to being like a creator, but, um, but I just, I love trying to find, like, I love doing research, um, you know, so kind of searching for searching for like what you know, the truth about, like, you know, what really gets people to click and yeah. what really gets people's attention. Oh, I like that. Um, so just, just on that like journey to learn more and more, um, I think that that inspires me and drives me a lot. And what's your favorite tool? Ooh, um, probably thumbnail test is my favorite tool right now. I, I like, so thumbnail test is my favorite paid tool. I like Google trends a lot. Um, and that's for a, a free tool. So like the other day I was taught, I, I just brought on a golf client and, um, and I'm like helping him come up with ideas. And he was like, man, why is my, uh, why is my channel just like tanking right now? So we went to Google trends, we put in golf and like uh, golf is very um, seasonal. So it like it peaks in the summer and it's like tanking in the winter. So like just all golf channels are tanking right now because it's just like people aren't thinking about golf right now. It's winter time. Uh, and so I love I love Google Trends for that. Also, I use Google Trends to um, to consider like if I'm going to like name drop a person. So like for like the, the Nikon B 500 example that we talked about earlier, I would put in like Nikon B 500 in Google trends. And I would also put like, like best camera ever or something. And you would see probably that like, you know, like your best camera for vlogging has like way more, way more searches than Nikon B 500. Um, probably I'm assuming I haven't, I haven't put that in there. Uh, but that would help me know like, all right, do I use like the, the, the name for this, or do I use like a label for this? So those are my two favorite tools, thumbnail test and Google trends. Oh, I like that. That's, that's a good lesson as well. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah, um, yeah, and what helps you most with your creator work-life balance? Ooh, um, I have terrible work-life balance right now. Um, nothing, <laughs> nothing helps me. I have a kid <laughs> on the way. I think she will, she will inspire me, um, uh, because I'm gonna, I got to they got to pay for college. I got to pay for a car, you know, got to pay for diapers. Uh, so she'll inspire me. And then, um, and she will also help with work-life balance. And so I won't be working as much and I'll be, uh, I'll be hanging out with her more. Yes. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. And what's one piece of advice that you'd give to other creators? So one thing that has helped me a lot is to think about like the, the process and like not the, not the like outcome. Uh, so for an example, um, maybe not the process, but like thinking about like very, very tiny outcomes. So I have a a blog about dog, like a little dog blog and like two, like three years ago, I remember like I was getting like one, uh, one like visit per day from like Google search. Right. So I was so excited about that one visit per day. And then like a couple of weeks later, I was getting two visits a day. And I was, I was so excited about getting, you know, uh, getting two visitors from SEO a day. Uh, now I get like a couple thousand a day, but like if I was expecting a couple thousand, like in the beginning, I probably would have burned out. So just getting excited about like the tiniest little things, um, like, Oh, I had, I had one visitor today. I was, I was, I was so pumped and that kept me going every day. It's like, all right, let me try to get two. Let me try to get two. Yeah. Uh, And like, same thing with like followers on like Twitter, like, um, you know, oh, I got I got an extra follower today. I'm at eight now. This is great. <laughs> this is this is working. So true. So yeah, just th- taking it in like incredible, incredibly, incredibly small baby steps, and uh, and getting really excited about those and letting those motivate you. Yeah, I agree. I think you really have to celebrate every win you can as a creator to keep that journey going. So that makes a lot of sense. 
Thank you so much, Jake. This has been such a great conversation. I love talking about YouTube and I feel like you've given us so much knowledge about YouTube titles. I didn't think I could talk about YouTube titles for 40 minutes. So I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> we, can still, we can keep this going. This is amazing. I can, I can go all Honestly, day. Honestly, <laughs> we probably could. We probably could. I mean, it just shows how much there is to YouTube, isn't there? Yes, yes. And this is only titles. We didn't, you know, like exactly. thumbnails, there's like yeah. ideas, there's topics, there's intros, there's retention, all that stuff. But YouTube is so fun. It is. But thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course, Octa. Thanks for having me. This conversation has given me a lot to think about for my own YouTube channel, especially applying the different angles of curiosity, fear and desire to your titles. If you want more advice on writing YouTube titles, check out Jake's newsletter, Creator Hooks. And if you are a creator, check out Passion Fruit. We help you to manage sponsorships, collaborations and payments all in one place.